Hey, hey, hello, welcome back to my beginner's guide series in Planet Coaster and today it's time to bring out the big guns. Today we are going to build our first B&M Hyper Coaster and to do that I'm going to go into the standard coasters and get Rage. Rage is the model that uh, is the most, most similar to what a BNM hyper coaster looks in real life, and we are gonna use this model to create our own super tall and super exciting BNM contraption. So, uh, after a couple of uh, tire drives, I'm going to go up with the chain lift. I put two drive tires, and now I'm going up with the chain lift. And I'm going up uh, every every step I do I go up uh, a little notch so the the rise is fluent and now that I am at 35 degrees this is where I'm going to go for the rest of the ascent uh, 45 degrees is usually what they do in real life it could be less but uh, that's the the maximum that they go in terms of uh, angle for uh, their rise and for the chain lift. We are up at 86 meters, and I think we are <laughs> pretty in a pretty good space to uh, to drop down here. Alright, let's try to get down as smooth as possible. I have auto tunnel, auto tunnel on. I'm sorry, my pronunciation is terrible. <laughs> I have that thing on because I want to get a little below ground for a reason you will see in uh, about a second when you have uh, finished the layout. I will reveal why I have gone a little uh, under the level of the earth for this one but it's not that much you can see I'm not going uh, fully under I'm going uh, just as much that is still open from the outside and it's just a little a little hole there and now we can go back up at 33 degrees as you can see I'm going very smoothly with this every piece is very long and uh, every angle change that I do is usually in one notch so 33 to 11 now here we can pretty much do it but uh, not more than uh, two uh, notches is where, is where I draw the line and I have the angle snap at 1125 which means that every step I take is 1125 degrees and I usually don't go over two steps in one single segment because these are fast. Now I'm going up and turning a little. This has to be a little bigger and we are going to turn 33 degrees. What I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to recreate the classic B&M turnaround. So this is going down and turning so that it's, a, it's, a, it's still a drop. You still uh, feel the effect of a drop, but you actually turn it and going back. And I think this is tall enough to to uh, to have our second hill here. Let's get the banking offset so we can make this hill have an inclination on the train, which is gonna look great once we are done and once this is moving out.
It's all heals, it's all airtime heals, that's what uh, these roller coasters get their thrills from and the speed. It's gonna be speed and uh, airtime moments. That, that's basically all of what these coasters are, are, are based off. So now we're going down a little bit here and uh, I kind of want to have a spiral here to slow down the train before we get to the braking area. So I'm going right here, 22 degrees and I'm doing a full circle. Okay, now this turnaround here that I'm making 22 degrees, okay, I will be going all the way around, 360 degrees all the way around, and these things, turns in general, slow trains down. This is a trick that can be applied to any kind of roller coasters. Uh, slow, to slow the train down, if you don't want to use brakes and you still want to give uh, your riders a thrill by having them, as I am doing here they are literally parallel to the ground with their heads they are banked at 90 degrees so it's still a thrill for them but in reality what you're trying to uh, get is the train to slow down uh, rolling around here and uh, turning 360 degrees it's a it's a good effective way to uh, decrease the speed without using any brakes and it's a trick a lot of manufacturers do and I suggest you do on your roller coasters too. Okay, time to make our usual maintenance shed here. And what I am using here is steel flat roof tiles because of the vibe I'm going for for these roller coasters but it depends really on the theme you're going for okay and now let's uh, do something for that hole now I'm using a rough concrete wall here and I am making myself a little artificial hole here by building this rectangle here. Now I'm going into roofs and with the same rough concrete roof flat I'm using it and I'm bringing it down to function as the ground for this, as the pavement for this man-made hole that you can find in a lot of roller coasters. When uh, coasters go below ground but not too much, they usually have these. And now by sculpting the rain, you can have this look as clean as possible. All right. Okay. Now it's time to have 
it's time to play a little with the terrain. These things go all the way across parks, so they could go over a lake, go over hills. It's usually the size of these things is is uh, incredible, as you, as you can see by the, the in-game map. So I'm I'm doing that. I'm placing hills. I'm placing lakes. I'm making this feel like and look like it's an incredibly big attraction. Maybe we can have another hill here. Right, time to detail with some uh, nature. Of course, as I said, these are big, big structures, so it's no wonder they sometimes get into the woods or they're building to in, in a place where there's really nothing else. The park is, it could be elsewhere, like the park is developed in another area and this ride goes all the way into the forest and then comes back into the park, right? It's, it's that big. <laughs> Some of those are that big. Now I'm adding these alpine trees and other kinds of trees to make it look a little more natural. I'm mixing it up basically. All right, look at this. Look, it looks amazing how it's towering over the horizon. Okay, we finished the layout. We uh, decorated the area, and now I want to add some rides here to make it look like this hypercoaster is part of a bigger park, and it's not like just lying there abandoned in the middle of the woods okay so these are not gonna be usable by the the people but it just for for cinematic purposes we're gonna place down some rides uh, the first of which is Malibu Rush which uh, is a B&M inverted coaster that I made some time ago you can watch a video on how I made that in the in the corner up there I will leave the link there. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's add something more. Maybe this wooden coaster should be in a in a theme park here. I'm trying to simulate the fact that there's a park there on the left, and it's not just uh, just that B and M all alone in this uh, <laughs> in this lakeside area. All right, I've added some rides, and this is how it looks. It looks intimidating. <laughs> Let me tell you, it looks really great. Let's set the time at night because we are going to work a little with the lights here to get ourselves a nice uh, theming for this hyper coaster. The name of th that I chose is Aurora. And we are going to mimic an Aurora if we can using lights that we have in game so i'm using this colorable area light that i will be placing all along the coaster track and all across the the whole um the whole roller coaster and on the support beams also to give a nice gradient effect uh, on the lighting and to make it feel like it's it's really an aurora coming down from the sky and it, it's gonna look amazing once you're done I promise you now uh, let's uh, color this green for starters yeah I like greens if you notice what I did earlier is I turned off every collision because this is gonna make me able to place this wherever I want, even on the tracks. Like now I'm completely free to place this light wherever I want, it will never become red. Like it will never tell me, no, you cannot place it here. Uh, so I have a little more freedom and I can 
play with it a little more. I am not gonna place it on the on the track, of course, but I'm gonna place it under the tracks. And to do so, I'm going up. I'm going to turn it this way, and I'm trying to align it with the angle of the climb. And here we go. I'm gonna do this for the full length of the track, changing colors, and at the end it's gonna look good. Trust the process. <laughs> okay. This took forever. It took forever. <laughs> Alright, now I'm also placing these lights over here on the support beams so that the whole thing is a little more visible from the distance and also for it allows me to create a really nice looking gradient of colors with uh, all the greens and the blues that I'm using and uh, it's gonna make the finished product look a little more clean so I'm trying to place one every three beams as uh, as a guide it really depends on how far in, in between are those beams for you and uh, yeah try to try to not have any area that is not hit by the light if you want to get this same feeling that I'm going for and yeah it's gonna take a lot of time <laughs> it's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of filling up and yeah it took a lot of time it took a lot of time guys but finally I have finished my creation this is aurora i have also made a nice logo for it when guests come in and for you to see of course and uh yeah it it took forever but i feel like the uh, <laughs> i feel like the final product looks absolutely amazing the view is stunning and yeah if you like what you so up until now, please hit that subscribe button. You made it this far, you might as well, right? I hope I'll see you guys very soon. We're gonna take a ride on this both at daytime and uh, at nighttime. Uh, please take care. <laughs> uh, try to have fun out there and I'll see you guys next time, okay? Bye! <laughs>